looking back on the ocean race, I think it was a, a huge learning curve for me personally and also our team. And, and I started off the race, I'd never been offshore before, I'd never spent a night on a boat. And to go into a 20 day leg, knowing you know, you're gonna be in a boat for three weeks straight, it's, it's pretty mentally tough. And, and so I kind of look back on it and think like, wow, I can't believe that I got through that. And then you know, on top of that, I can't believe we managed to get through that and, and race hard and, and kind of perform it at a higher level against the best in the world. And so it's a very satisfying feeling and uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud to be a part of it and it was such a good event. I think throughout the race my mentality changed a lot and I, I felt I really changed as a person as well and, and at the start of the race I was always quite anxious about you know, getting stuff done and you know, you know, wondering what's next and, and then towards the end you just roll with it and you, and you learn to chill out a lot and it makes you a better person and you kind of can deal with unexpected changes better and I think it, it really helps to kind of have that mentality shift and, it, and it's what offshore racing is about, you know, you just got to roll with the punches and it's not over till it's over which we saw going into the final leg of the ocean race. I mean, the, the ocean race compared to the America's Cup, the America's Cup is the Formula One of sailing and, and you have a large team behind you and, and there's constant development going on during the racing, whereas the, the, the ocean race is really the Dakar rally of, of sailing and you have a team and there's a lot of work that goes in before the race, but once you're out there, you're on your own. There's no assistance from the outside and it's just you and the elements and the equipment that you have. I think being in the Southern Ocean, there's, it's hard to describe it and there's absolutely nothing that can prepare you for it and I'd rather go through the doldrums a hundred times than go back into the Southern Ocean. I mean, it's, a, it's not a place where humans belong. It's, it's freezing cold, it's windy and it's just miserable down there. And the thing that you have to constantly remind yourself is there's seven, seven other teams out there who are going through the exact same thing as you and so you need to motivate yourself to do a better job than them and that's really what gets you through it but that's not a pleasant place to be and, and humans don't belong there. Transitioning back to normal life after doing the Volvo Ocean Race or a big event like that, it is difficult and you know everything is really kind of catered to us on board. Life's very simple. We have all the food on board, we have all the information we need and, and we go sailing. It's very simple and then you go back to more normal life and there's bills to pay, things to do, you know, people to meet and so it's pretty difficult and uh, I mean I'm, I'm lucky that I've done a few campaigns in the past and so I've done that transition a few times but it's by no means easy the more you do it. Halfway through the race, knowing that KP and Bauer had done it you know, eight to ten times, I was thinking these guys are absolutely mad. You know, what could motivate somebody to go and do that? And then after spending some time away from the race, I can actually see the attraction and I'm itching to go again and, and I can really see you know, what, what people are drawn to and it's just being out there in the nature, you know, absolutely no outside influences other than you, the weather and the boat. And I think there's no greater challenge than that in, in setting yourself up against the best and, and trying to beat them. And uh, so I can really see how those guys have gone back so many times. And, and it's funny, when you go away from the race, you forget all the bad moments as much as you wish you don't, because they're the things that make you want to stop going. But yeah, you forget all the bad moments and you only remember the good challenging parts. And, and that's what really motivates you to go back. I think the direction of the ocean race is, is really, really good and I like how it's attracting a new generation and, and young people in the V65s and then with the Amoka 60 it's going to attract you know, a lot of single-handed sailors and probably a lot of French people and, uh, and the boats are just extreme, they are really, really cool, they're the cutting edge of technology, I mean outside the America's Cup this is the, the biggest kind of development class in the world and, and they are really at the cutting edge and I think the added dimension of foiling is going to be huge in ocean racing and, and how you manage that is going to be a huge challenge. So the ocean race is tough enough as it is and then throwing these boats into the mix, it's going to be a huge challenge for everyone involved. The, probably the key difference in this next race is going to be the personnel you have on board and you really need all-rounders. You need people that can do every position on board and I think gone are the days where you have a specific bowman, pitman, trimmer, you know, helmsman, and it's going to be, everyone's going to have to do everything at a very high level. So I think that the type of sailor that you're looking for needs to be able to do everything. They need to know the mechanics of the boat, the boat building, sail making, and, and kind of all the, the shore side of things as well. Because when you're out there, there's no one else to fix it for you. And you've got such a small amount of people on board, you need to be able to cover all those areas. And so it's going to be hugely challenging as a sailor. And to be able to get that right combination, it's going to be tough. And to sail on, on board, I think it's going to be even harder than it 
ever has been in the past.